Hi, I'm Kat and today I have for you a true crime case, a word in Romanian and I will also do my makeup at the same time. It's not exactly like a true crime case but more suited for Halloween really. And this was actually suggested to me by Samantha, one of my YouTube viewers. So let's start with the word for today which is Vampiri. 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 Well done guys, you just said vampires. Along with the local Transylvanian folklore about the undead spirits, some more legends provided rich inspiration for Bram Stoker's vampire mythology. The legend of Vlad the Impaler remains shrouded in mystery and the truth is that no one knows where the legend ends and the history begins. As a historical and folkloric figure, the Voivod was chosen by the writer Bram Stoker as the main hero of his 1897 novel. Since then, Dracula and Transylvania, the land that harbors the mysterious castle full of ghosts and vampires somewhere in the middle of the dark forests, has become the subject of over 750 films documentaries or novels inspired by the Irish writer's book. There are many legends. One says that Vlad the Impaler's transformation into the bloodthirsty Count Dracula is due to the fact that according to the custom at that time, the winner of a fight would quench his thirst by drinking the blood of the defeated. Is this the truth about Dracula? Vlad the Impaler was born in the city of Sigishara, Transylvania in 1431, later becoming the ruler of Wallachia. His father, Vlad Dracul, was a knight in the Order of the Dragon, a knighthood order in Eastern Europe that aimed to stop the expansion of the Ottoman Empire. The emblem of the Order of the Dragon depicted a dragon for the Ottomans and the cross, a sign of Christianity. And Vlad Dracul wore this symbol everywhere on flags, coins and seals. His second son was Vlad II, Dracula. The A at the end of the word Dracul being a way to establish membership or ownership. Dracula, son of Dracul. Dracul in Romanian language actually means the devil. The nickname the Impaler was attributed to him only after his death in 1476 due to his preferred method of punishment. Impalement was a cruel method of execution, the victim being pierced on a sharp, antique stake. As a child, Vlad the Impaler lived as a hostage of the Turks. While his family was assassinated, he was made aware of the torments that his family went through. This seems to be the reason that poisoned his soul so that once he became a ruler, he punished by cutting, skinning, hanging, beheading or impaling. Known for his intolerance and cruelty, Vlad was at the same time respected by his subjects for his fighting campaigns against the Turks. He was respected both as a fighter and as a ruler who did not tolerate injustice during his reign raising several monasteries. He was an acclaimed hero but also feared by his people. In the legend of the ages, Victor Hugo depicts the way in which Vlad the Impaler met the army of Sultan Mehmed the Conqueror who came to conquer Wallachia. Advancing towards Tergoviste, the soldiers of the Turkish army were horrified by the sight offered by the Impaler. Burnt houses, scorched fields, and wells with poisoned water. But everything culminated with the image near the walls of the citadel, where Vlad the Impaler had taken shelter. An immense forest of corpses. Overwhelmed by fear and horrified by the smell of the 20,000 corpses of Turkish prisoners impaled on stakes, Mehmed himself retreated, acknowledging the Voivod's victory. For Romanians, Vlad the Impaler remained the ruler at the time when you could drink water from the fountain of the Govishte Citadel with a massive gold goblet without anyone stealing it. 
historical sources confirm the existence of this goblet which was used until the day Vlad the Impaler died. Bran Castle was actually baptized Dracula's Castle more than three decades ago by tourists, especially Americans, who went in search of Dracula from horror films based on Bram Stoker's novel. Tourists were surprised at the entrance to Transylvania by a castle that, by its appearance, resembled the castle described by the author. That's why they named it Dracula's Castle. What connection can there be between the Dracula of the tourist imagination, who came in search of the vampire, and Bran Castle? It's simple, actually. If it's about the ruler of Wallachia, history records several campaigns undertaken by Vlad the Impaler to punish the merchants of Brasov who did not obey the voivod's orders regarding trade in the markets of Wallachia. His passage would have been at Bran, the closest passage to Brasov, which connected to Tegoviste, the residence of the Wallachian lord. Relationships with the Bran castle's residents were not very friendly, as they were representatives of the city of Brasov, hostile to Vlad the Impaler. It's not known if uh, Vlad the Impaler ruled Bran Castle as there are no written records to indicate this. But existing documents in archives regarding Bran Castle are predominantly administrative. They refer to the income and expenses of the Bran Castle domain and to a very small extent to events of a political military nature. But in the autumn of 1462, after the Hungarian king's army, Matthias Corvinus captured Vlad near the castle at Podul Dumbovice, about 25 kilometers from Bran, the ruler, Vlad the Impaler, was taken to Bran Castle and imprisoned there for around two months. According to the book, Vlad Zepes Dracula, Mirador Publishing, Arad 2002, by Gheorghe Lazia Postelnicu. From there, Vlad was taken and imprisoned at Visegrad Fortress in modern-day Hungary. Bran Castle has an extremely rich history as a legendary place, but not only. In reality, Bran Castle's history begins in the year 1377, when the Hungarian king, Louis the Great, issued a decree granting the inhabitants of Brasov the privilege to build a castle. The castle itself had the role of a customs point and a fortress meant to protect the border against the Ottoman Empire's expansion. In 1407, Sigismund of Luxembourg offered the castle as a fort in exchange for loyalty to the ruler of Wallachia, Mircea the Elder, to be able to retreat there in case of a Turkish attack. In 1918, Transylvania became part of Greater Romania and the citizens of Brasov offered the castle to Queen Maria of Romania, or Queen Mary of Romania, making it her favorite residence. However, the main attraction that draws tourists to visit Brown Castle is the legend of Count Dracula known all over the world. Vlad the Impaler, to your disappointment, never lived at the castle. He was imprisoned there for two months in 1462. He did, however, have several connections to the castle, conducting campaigns to punish German merchants in Brasov, who refused to submit to him and pay the trade taxes. At the same time, in the neighboring villages of Bran and throughout most of Transylvania, there was a belief in the existence of very bad spirits, known as Steregoi, or Staffy. It referred to seemingly living people, to Strigoi, who during the day led a normal life, but at the moment of night's arrival, while they slept, their spirit left their bodies to haunt the sleep of the villagers. Brown Castle is an architectural monument with specific Gothic-style elements, surrounded by a massive wall with firing slits, and is considered one of the scariest places in the world. According to legend, Vlad Zepes once left his wife, Katarina, alone in the castle. When she committed suicide, he renounced God and he became a vampire. But, you know, as I said, local folklore does tell of the evil spirits called Steregoi, similar to vampires that once haunted the Bran area. The legend describes Vlad's first encounter with a beautiful Saxon girl, Katarina, while inspecting the fortress walls and Vlad's noble assistance, 
carrying her sled filled with food out to the fortress guards. As was the custom in the Guild Citadel, families residing near the bastions were obliged to take turns bringing food to the company of soldiers guarding the area and the respective gate. Katarina was 17 years old, she was young, very beautiful, and Vlad already passed his youth, but he had an artistic talent with an Italian touch. He fell in love instantly with a girl with golden braids and eyes as wonderful as sapphires, seemingly forever. To the astonishment of his officer's entourage and the awe of her cousins helping to push the sleigh, the prince alone pulled the load to the bastion gate, remembering that he actually met her father in 1438, the year of Katarina's birth, when Thomas Siegel and some merchants had been captured by the Turks during a raid, and they were freed by Vlad Zepes. When they reached the bastion gate and the guards came to take the sleigh, he took her hand and kissed it. And the scene was then recounted dozens of times to everyone in the family and neighborhood by her two cousins and her younger brother, Thomas. And the townspeople who didn't know much about the political, military or commercial affairs of the nobility were first amazed by what they heard and then began to speak badly of Dracul, the military governor, claiming that he had set his eyes on their beautiful Katarina and since she was in great danger, she shouldn't be allowed by her parents to leave the house all winter until the prince left the citadel and went on campaigns beyond the mountains. Vlad was protective of Katarina so much so that he would send guards to follow her and at one time when she was out with her cousins, he became furious because he knew that the young blonde girls would be kidnapped all over Transylvania so he didn't really like Katarina roaming around. It was said that Vlad had to swear to Katarina while offering her a golden medallion in the shape of a heart, a future Saxon graphic symbol, that he would live a beautiful and carefree life with her. However, Saxon women didn't wear jewelry much, especially after the Lutheran Reformation, and men did not usually give them such trinkets, considering them degrading and a purely French custom. Therefore, romantic. After historical research, it was conclusively found that this legend, that this legend born in medieval times actually originated from the romantic event when Vlad Zepes Dracula promised the abducted maiden Katarina not only an aristocratic life suitable for her beauty, but also fidelity. And the legend says that he actually kept his word at least in Transylvania. While historical fact shows that the impaler had a ruthless side using brutal methods to impose order, the Dracula vampire myth mainly stems from medieval Saxon accounts portraying Vlad as a monster combined with Bram Stoker's fictional portrayal. For thrill seekers now, near Bram Castle, a horror museum has been arranged. Those in search of frightening experiences can visit an unusual exhibition of torture instruments in a room such as the Iron Maiden, Judas's Cradle or Interrogation Chair. One of the main attractions of the castle is the Secret Passage, which in the past was known only to soldiers. In case invaders managed to enter the citadel, soldiers used this passage to climb to the top of the castle, from where, according to historians, they would throw stones and hot pitch at attackers to drive them away. But there are more castles associated with Dracula. The ancient Poenar castle is shrouded in mystery and history nestled in the heart of Romania's Fagarash mountains. Known as one of the legendary residences of Vlad the Impaler, the castle draws stories from around the world. Situated on top of Mount Cetățuia, near the Vidraru Dam, the fortress has become a major attraction for tourists fascinated by the Dracula myth. Poenar Castle was a secondary residence of Vlad the Impaler, initially built as a refuge from the Ottomans, but also the site where Vlad impaled hundreds of boyars. Poenar Castle also inspired Jules Verne's masterpiece, The Carpathian Castle, with legends recounted by a Romanian woman about Vlad the Impaler's mysterious stronghold. 
Just like the life of Vlad the Impaler, Poenar Castle is surrounded by legends and mysteries, most of them revolving around vampires. A lesser known mystery, however, is connected to the 1480 steps leading up to the castle. According to legend, after climbing 500 stairs, the first strange signs appear. The heartbeat quickens and chills run down the spine. Although instinct says to turn back, something oddly compels you to keep going. The explanation for this strange phenomenon is said to be related to the atrocities Vlad the Impaler committed when building Poenari Castle. According to various chronicles, between steps 500 and 700, Vlad impaled hundreds of boyars and their families for plotting to kill one of the ruler's brothers, Prince Mihai. The prince's revenge was especially brutal as he ordered the bodies impaled on stakes to be left to rot, hanging in the open. Since no priest was allowed to perform rites for the dead, the site became haunted by the restless spirits of those unable to find peace to this day. The fact that the place remains possessed has been confirmed by the site's guards and soldiers protecting the Vidraru Dam. They have repeatedly shared that on the nights with a full moon, blood-curling screams and voices crying for help can be heard. The locals say this strange mystery has never been explained as no one has ever dared to climb up at night to see what happens where the chilling screams emanate from. In Vlad the Impaler's time, the trail to the castle was made by horse on trampled dirt paths. There was never any paved road or old staircase. In fact, construction of the 1480 steps didn't begin until 1965, completed in 1972. So, in summary, Poenar Castle is a mysterious and history-rich fortress associated with Dracula with awe-inspiring views from its cliff-top location in the Romanian mountains. The challenging ascent winding through the forest up 1480 steps to the majestic ruins is said to be haunted by spirits from its bloody past under Vlad the Impaler's rule. In 1931, 1932, at the order of the Romanian Academy, the archaeologist Dino Rossetti researched Snagov Monastery to discover Vlad Dracula's body. But he discovered only a few looted graves inside the monastery with local legends saying that Vlad's body was buried at the entrance to the monastery. Not believing this legend, the researcher dug up and uncovered a grave in front of the altar. However, this grave was empty. Continuing to dig, he found a pagan altar with animal bones that had been sacrificed. Giving the legend a chance, he began to examine the place at the entrance to the monastery where he found an unlooted grave apparently belonging to a nobleman. The clothing wrapped around the corpse showed they belonged to a wealthy man. A ring from Nuremberg was also found. However, the skeleton had a head and it's certain that Vlad was actually beheaded so the corpse couldn't have been him. However, uh, Snagov Monastery has a high degree of humidity which causes most of the earthly remains of those buried there to decompose very quickly. So it's very possible that Vlad's body had decomposed before the researcher began to discover it. One thing though is for sure, Dracula did exist. Whether the Voivod Vlad the Impaler is the same as a diabolical vampire, I guess, kind of depends on what you believe. The true man likely laid somewhere in between. Ultimately, the Dracula legends have granted Vlad Cepes far greater notoriety than he would otherwise have achieved. The legends paint a romanticized picture of Vlad Cepes pursuing the fair Saxon maiden Katarina, clashing with her townspeople, yet still managing to steal her heart contrasting with his brutal reputation. In the beliefs of many people, vampires are that people who, by virtue of a punishment or curse during their lives, 
leave their graves at night and wander among the living who they surprise in their sleep and suck their blood. They are only food. Even the bat is considered a vampire, an animal that lives during the day in a cave and at night comes out and sucks the blood of people while they sleep. In Central America and South America, vampires are a species of large bats that feed on the blood of birds and mammals caught in their sleep. In his famous work, the ancient poet Homer identifies the bat with the soul of the dead in the underworld. In the popular beliefs of the Carpathian, Danubian, Pontic area, the equivalent of the vampire, in the sense of dead people leaving their graves at night and wandering among the living, surprising them in their sleep and causing them many discomforts and damages, sucking their blood, taking milk from the cattle, is known as the Strigoi, like I mentioned previously. It can be a living Strigoi, one who according to the folklorist Aurel Candria spends all day dealing with chores like other people, but at night, as soon as he falls asleep, his soul comes out going to meet other Strigoi and the body remains as if dead in bed. The souls of this Strigoi kill children and suck their blood, take out hands and crops. The same author says that when one of these beings, who is believed to have been a strigoi, dies, they burn a red skewer in the heart or a hairpin so that its soul cannot leave the grave and torment people at night. In Romanian mythology, there are also dead strigoi, those spirits of the dead that come from people who are strigoi in life or at whose funeral something went wrong. They lost their way to the afterlife or they had nothing to pay their tolls with. Besides the harm they do to people during their lifetime, the dead strigoi eat one by one a member of their family or they only eat their hearts and suck their blood. In the villages around Bran, the belief in the existence of evil spirits called steregoi is still preserved. The elders of the villages remember that until half a century ago, it was believed that there were certain people alive, strigoi, who led a normal life during the day and at night in sleep, their souls left their bodies and wandered through the village, tormenting people in their sleep. These evil spirits wandered from midnight to the first crowing of the roosters when they no longer had the power to harm people. So I don't know what you guys believe, but my belief is that any legend has some kind of, you know, a seed of truth in there which maybe for a lack of knowledge could have been interpreted differently than what it actually was. I don't know, you guys let me know what do you think in the comment section down below. For now, thank you so much for watching, take care, stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!